Hey, uh, hey, hey, yeah, hey, what a time to be alive. I'm left for dead, now I'm living right. No new friends, no new advice. That was high then, but we got bigger heights. We got big fish, bigger fish to fry. Better myself than I wrote a dice. Man, it ain't a gamble if you know you nice. Welcome back to the Dream Podcast. I'm your host, R. Amen. This is the number one podcast in Dallas. And I have a very, very special guest with me today. We got Saeed Abdallah in the building. And uh, what is the name of your organization? CEO and founder of? Uh, Wealth Warriors. Wealth, Wealth Warriors. Warriors. That's right. Agency. That's right. Man, it's a pleasure to have you. My man, appreciate you, you, bro. I've been looking forward uh, to doing this with you. Uh, I've been following your content, following the podcast. I've been seeing you doing your thing. I told you the first time I came across you was on the leaderboard. I was yeah. like, who's this guy? He's doing uh, uh, some great uh, recruiting here. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I came across your page. Uh, I followed you. I've been following your content, man. And uh, for us, especially our uh, Middle Eastern community, we got to stay close together. So uh, I love this platform that, that we have where we could come together, man. Where, you know, I'm in Florida. You're here in uh, Texas. So coming to these events, coming together and, uh, you know, the conversations we have prior to jumping on this podcast, uh, it, it feels like we've known each other for, for decades, right? It does. Uh, so I'm excited to do this, man, cover some topics, some stories and uh, learn a little bit more about you, man, and, and uh, you know, provide as much value as possible. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. So it's funny how we've, you know, maybe messaged each other back and forth here and there, but we've never met. We met for the first time yesterday. And it was just kind of like, yo, what's up, bro? And it was just like off the rip, like love, connection. It's like, and then the more we get to talking, it's like, yo, we have this in common. We have this in common. It's like, dude, we live the same life, man. And it's like amazing to see like your, your parallel, your brother doing the same thing you're doing, the same mission and vision that you're trying to instill for your people and the legacy you want to leave behind for your culture. And especially in an industry, which is life insurance, retirement planning, financial services, our community might not believe in it, which is funny enough. It's not like it's a God or anything or religion. You, mm -hmm. They just don't believe in it, which is a funny thing. So it, it's great to see that representation. And it just feels uh, like we're the trailblazers for our people. And not just, you know, the Middle Eastern community, just all human beings in general, because people you know, have, you know, the skepticism or they've had bad experiences or they've met a bad person through uh, the art industry. But, um, I want to start from the beginning, man, your, your, your history, your story, because uh, I know it goes back to even before you're born. Uh, could you go into your lineage and, and your last name and, and where your like history comes from? Absolutely, man. So this uh, a great man migrated from Palestine uh, over to back in those times, it was called the Americas. So it was in North America, South America it was the Americas. Right. So this gentleman came from Palestine, migrated over to the Americas. He ended up in New York City. OK, at the time, you had to be 25 years and older to be able to come into New York. He was 21. So he was turned down. So then he started. He left and he started sailing, and ended up in Colombia out of all places. Uh, he got there to Colombia, you know, Middle Eastern guy gets there. Uh, and, you know, us, well, Middle Easterns were very entrepreneurial. So he got there, started, you know, his little store, his business. Um, you know, he met Colombian uh, lady, great grandmother. Uh, they had four kids, one of them uh, being my grandfather. So then my grandfather has two kids, uh, a boy and a girl, uh, and then the girl gets pregnant, right, uh, at early age, 20, 21 years old, uh, not married. And you know us with, you know, uh, how our values was like, yeah, you got to be married before you have kids. Uh, so, you know, the conversation was, okay, what are we going to do here? Um, and pretty much my grandfather was like, listen, if you're going to have this baby, you're not married. The one thing that I ask is that the baby has my last name. So I ended up having my grandfather's last name from my mom's side. And so it's like me and my mom, we're, we're like brother and sister. We have the same last name. Interesting. So my, my name is Sahid Abdallah, okay, very Middle Eastern, but I was born in Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Colombia. I, I was raised there until I was eight years old. And then uh, my mom came over to the States in 2001. And then I came in 2004. Where'd she come in the States to? Mm -hmm. uh, New York. Florida. Oh, Florida. Okay. So she, yeah, she came from Colombia to Florida and uh, she came over. So it's interesting because a lot of people, they come here for what? A better life. Uh -huh. 
she had a great life in Colombia. My grandfather, he's, you know, he was a lawyer, a judge. He was in a politics. Lived a, she was more of like, hey, you know what? I want to go and put myself in a position where I want to put myself out of my comfort zone. I'm very used to the great life here. I'm very used to, I, I want some growth. And the best way to find that growth is to go from one place to another that you don't know, you're not familiar, you don't speak the language and thrive from that. So she did that. She came from Colombia to Florida, didn't know anybody, got here and figured it out. Uh, she met my stepdad, which I say he's my dad because he raised me. Um, you know, I don't associate a dad figure from someone that just gave, you know, the seeds, but the one that essentially watered it and grew the uh, crops. So that's my stepdad, man. He raised me. He gave me the most, the values. And he, they met, got together. And then I came, like I said, in 2004. I grew up, man, in a very hardworking uh, household. My dad, bro, my stepdad, he worked, bro, 7 in the morning, 11 at night. Sometimes he had to work overnight. Seven in the morning, seven in the morning next day. What did Hard. he do? What did he do? So he, he was in the military, but he came out of the military. When he met my mom, he worked as a security, the head of security for, at that time, it was called, um, what's that text? Uh, city, uh, Circuit City. Okay, I, I don't okay. know if you remember yeah, Circuit yeah, City. Yeah. So uh, he worked there, so, uh, head of security, when he met my mom. And then he ended up working uh, security at this place called Williams Island, which is a, like a very wealthy residential place there in Miami. Um, and he worked there. Like I said, he was the head of security and it's 24 seven. So there were times he was the morning shift, afternoon shift. Sometimes, hey, they didn't cover the overnight shift. So he had to stay overnight. So he worked a lot. And my mom was a stay at home mom. So she was like, hey, I'm going to take care of the household. I'm going to take care of the kids. And the dad was out working, making it happen. So I saw that from a very early age, man. You know, saw my dad working a lot, mm -hmm. like way too much. Sometimes I didn't even see my dad. And the time that I did see him, uh, one of the great things that my, my dad really is crazy because he worked so hard, but he always found the time to spend time with me. Mm -hmm. So I remember growing up, we always went to baseball games. We always went to football games. We always went to monster truck. Like he spent a lot of quality time despite working so much. So imagine the only day that he would have to rest, he chose to spend the whole day with me. So then, you know, that I saw that. But then my mom, she was she, her inside of her. She's always been entrepreneur at heart. So she like she was a stay at home mom, but she sold stuff on eBay. She made it happen. She got start. She started a little business with uh, some lady that she met selling food to like construction workers. Uh, so she was always itching too. like she liked working. She liked doing stuff. So I saw that from an early age, man, parents hard workers um, and listen the light bill was always paid so light was never cut off food was always on the table and we found ways to go on vacation Disney and all this stuff uh, but I didn't realize like how much struggle that we were actually going through until later on in life and um, so you know like I said I saw hard-working parents made it happen uh, I never missed anything I always had everything and uh, I was very hyperactive uh, troublemaker, never good in school, horrible grades in school. You're a troublemaker. In I was school. a troublemaker. Really? Yeah. Like, I, define that. Troublemaker in the sense that I I had ADHD, so I couldn't focus on things. So I was the class clown. I made everybody laugh. Uh, and my my wife always makes fun of me, but I love attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love seeking attention. I've always been like that from a very young young age. It was always like I try to find kind of, you know, being the center of attention. And I get that from my grandfather because when I was little, you know, before I moved to Florida, uh, like I said, he was a politician. So I always followed him everywhere. So I always saw him center of attention, speaking, shaking hands. You know, everybody's looking at him. He's sitting down. He's speaking similar to what we see in our company. When yeah. we see certain leaders speak, everybody just sitting there paying attention. I grew up around that with my grandfather. So I, I enjoyed that I enjoyed being the center of attention. So sometimes when I'm in certain groups and certain people asking questions, I love that man because I saw my grandfather doing that. So I that was like me in school. You know, it was attention seeker. Everybody like somehow, some way, the attention was always kind of on me. Um, but I found that, and then I started devoting that to the wrong things. Mm. Okay, so then it wasn't for good; it was for bad. So disrupting class. Now, sports was always a big part of, of me growing up. I played soccer uh, growing up, first sport. Uh, and somehow, man, when I came to the state sixth grade, I stopped playing soccer. And guess what sport I ended up playing? 
ended up playing basketball I at a basketball. ball school. I know you do. I love basketball. Uh, I, and me, you know me, I'm not the tallest. I'm 5'8", 5'9", you yeah. know, 5'10". Uh, underdogs. I get underdogs. Uh, so I started playing basketball, and that's what kept me in line. So high school came around. So sixth grade, I'm going to take it to sixth grade. So sixth grade, uh, I, I think I, I it was a record at school for the worst grades in the history. So I got like six Fs, bro, one D. Like it was horrible. And my dad, he took me to Orlando to meet his cousin that came from similar background. Troublemaker, trouble kid, bad grades. And they took me on this very interesting journey of let me show you what I went through. They took me to a homeless shelter. Uh, they took me late at night to where all the crackheads and all the people were hanging out. And he was straight up like, listen, if you continue to do what you're doing, this is what your life is going to be like. Is this the life that you want? I said, no. Came back, got it together. And I was like, OK, if I want to play sports and if I want to play for my school, I have to have good grades. So now I started focusing more on school. And that's what kept me in line. High school came around. You had no choice. Your grades had to be on point to be able to play. So that's what kept me afloat in school. And then fast forward senior year, I'm like, all right, I only did the school thing because I wanted to play sports. I'm not getting a scholarship to go play out of college. Obviously, I'm not going professional. I'm 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, I got to come to the realization that what am I going to do with my life? So I had to sit down with my dad. I'm like, dad, listen, I don't want to go to college. I suck at school. I want to go to the military. I want to go to the Air Force because they said, you know, the, the good stuff is in, in the Air Force. He was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. He straight up was like, all right, son, listen, do you want to tell people <laughs> what to do or do you want to get told what to do? Uh, you know, me being the uh, attention seeker, I'm like, dad, I want to tell people what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. He was like, all right. So my advice to you is go to college get a degree and then once you finish you go in as an officer mm -hmm. okay then you know it's more prestigious is not you don't do the uh excuse my language the shitty jobs in the military right so i'm like all right fine you know so i went with him i, I got enrolled at a college broward college um i was working a full time and i was going to school full time mm -hmm. And I had it. So me, I've always liked being in a relationship because it kept me out of trouble. Mm. Anytime I was not in a relationship, I was not doing the best things. I was partying. I'm an adrenaline junkie at heart. So I like that adrenaline. And I always like being in a relationship, kept me focused, kept me working, kept me in school. And that was it, man. So I ended up doing pretty good in college, surprisingly. Dean's list. Really? You know, yeah, man. Great. Like 3.5. 3.8 and and college and i'm like all right finish college with honors i don't know how with honors what did you study so uh when you do your first two years is your general uh you general know classes. associate the you know degree so everything's general now depending on what field you choose certain classes are going to be concentrated towards that but your first two years in college is all the same stuff and for me at least and what was your full-time job at that time so I was working uh, in the hospitality industry at a hotel doing valet. Okay. Doing valet. So that, man, I'm telling you, uh, I always, this is my advice to a lot of people that come out of high school and don't want to go to college and don't want to go to um, the military. I say the best thing that you could do is do six months of hospitality work, mm -hmm. whether it's a server at a college, uh, at a restaurant, whether it's valet, whether it's hotels, and then do six months of sales, any sales. You could do door to door. You can do any sales job. If you do six months of hospitality work, six months of sales, you're going to be way better off than the people that are going to college and getting That's a degree. That's great advice. That is great advice. I wish I would have um, been open-minded to sales so much sooner. I worked at a restaurant. My first job was at a restaurant. I was there for six, seven years. So I was a, a, a host, then a server, until I became an engineer. So all through college, I was a server. And, um, you know, it was great hours, great money, um, but I, it was basically sales, right? You have to sell the experience, but I never did a like full sales job. And I always looked down on sales because of the perspective of whatever influenced me. I don't even, I look back now and I don't know what it was, but that was an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for someone young, mm -hmm. especially a man, get in sales. If you, if you, uh, the skills you learn through sales, communication, persuasion, um, networking, uh, how to sell yourself, not a product, but dress sharp, be groomed, have the vocabulary, read books. It just sharpens you as a man. And then if you want to, you know, eventually lead a woman, 
you need to be able to lead men to buy something or whatever it is. That's true. So, That's a good point. And I, I just something that I yeah, any great advice. Uh, six months of hospitality, six months of sales. So let me ask you this. Now let's talk about the sales. Why don't people get into sales? Because we're sold the dream of a job. Um, and that's I think that's really what it was with me. So the whole because I was very focused on getting a engineering degree because that's what I believed would fix all my problems. So mm -hmm. when you're sold this, you know, degree, usually it's OK, this degree is going to set you free. So and then you always hear things like these get degrees. So it's like, yeah, you can struggle through your way through college, get a degree and then you can go get a job. And then you get a job and you're like, OK, well, this is a little bit better, but it's still not making you it's not giving you the life you want. And when you don't have the life you want. Then you go to your boss and you're like, OK, how can I make more money? And they're like, oh, well, you have to be here for five years. Then you can make more money. And you're like, all right, well, I'm going to get a new job. And then you switch jobs and you, keep, you like how many times can you switch jobs until you realize it's not going to go from 70,000 to 250,000. It's just that's not going to happen. That's true. So if that's the goal, if you want to live a very basic, simple life where you're going on vacations twice a year, uh, you work Monday through Friday, you're probably eating out maybe once or twice at, you know, medium to upper middle class restaurants. That's OK. Uh, you'll live that life. But if you want to live an extraordinary life, if you want to live a life of abundance, if you want to say, you know what? I want to go to Italy tomorrow and because there is a game. Maybe I want to go to Madrid and watch the game. Maybe I want, okay, the Mavericks are in the playoffs right now. I want great seats. I want to have an experience. I want to, oh, it's my wife's birthday next week, my girl's birthday next week. Let's, let's go to France. Let's go wherever. So if you want to have that type of lifestyle, if you want a nice car, because as men, we probably want a nice car. What, what's your dream car? I like Porsche. Porsche, okay. Or sorry, uh, so Haas taught me when he went to the uh, dealership uh, to it's get his car, it's Porsche. Porsche, I just recently so, found so, out as yeah, well. Yeah, so excuse me, it's Porsche, right? I, I, uh, I like Porsche, man. They're, they're, I, I like it, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be completely transparent with you. Because I did valet, mm -hmm. cars don't impress me. Mm. Because I've been in all of the cars. Got you. Got you know you. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not really driven by cars. Okay. You know what I mean? And I've like, like I said, I've driven these cars. Yeah, they're nice and everything, but it's not like, oh, what drives you? A nice car doesn't drive me. Got you. You know what I mean? I got you. Uh, that doesn't drive me. The lifestyle, like comfort, yeah. traveling, uh, no freedom. stress, freedom. You know that obviously drives me. For me, so. I've had, I'm going to share this with you. We were, I was talking to uh, my wife. So we were talking about like, okay, what, what, what shift is that we have during this, uh, train the trainers? Mm -hmm. What was, what was driving us now? So we just got back from a three day event in Dallas, Texas, where we have everyone from our company come out three day boot camp of training and, uh, sales, networking skills uh how to scale and develop your business and passive income in the in the financial service industry all right so that's why i lost my voice everybody there you go yeah, my yeah, man yeah. <laughs> yeah me i i feel like i, I like screaming because i didn't lose <laughs> it but uh, i guess i was drinking a lot of hot coffee throughout the whole thing that's yeah. why it kept me but okay so uh going back to uh, what we were speaking about in terms of what drives me right so that's always something that everybody's in the search for what is going to drive you? What is going to keep you excited in this business despite going through setbacks, through challenges? So we were in MD meeting. Okay, not going to share too much about it, but uh, Patrick was given his message. And me, it's funny because I come from not wanting kids. Mm. I never wanted kids. I was sold uh, from my family that uh, I always looked up to my uncle nice house nice car travels the world and then i was sold that oh you know for you to live like this you shouldn't have kids so i was sold that for a very long time prior to me uh meeting my wife getting married uh i met you know i was with someone uh that opened the door and i was like you know what i'm gonna consider because i was gonna get a surgery mm. i was gonna get a surgery to not have kids that's how like determined i was she opened the door i'm like okay met my wife got in this business 
and and saw and realized a lot of people are living their dream life and they actually have three four five six seven eight ten kids that like what drives them is kids so i'm there in md meeting you know i'm hearing patrick's message and i'm thinking about man what really drives me what is driving me today like what how what's the future look like and he he casted a vision in terms of php our leaders we're going to develop other leaders and mainly those leaders are going to be our kids yeah. our kids are one day going to be leading this country our kids are one day going to be in office our uh, kids are going to be the ones that are going to be running all these companies uh so what do i have to do today what do i have to do because the life we're living today is decisions we made two years ago yeah so now me and my wife are like hey listen you know what needs to drive us is the future of our kids we have to be visionaries we got to look 5 10 15 20 years from now we can't think about six months from now a year we got to think about what we do today is what's going to be the consequence of the life we live two years from now mm -hmm. so if we're not doing the right things today if we're not working hard today if we're not going out there and prospecting and recruiting the world today we're not going to have that life two years from now yeah so we have to make sure that we do everything that we need to do today because what we do today we're going to suffer the consequences two years from now and no one's in charge uh but the men upstairs of the kids and and when the time like because we think oh the time is going to be when we're doing this when we're making this income when we're here you're not in control of that whenever he wants you to have the kids you're going to get the kids now what you choose to do is you have control what you do today mm -hmm. because i mean i have some business partners that unexpectedly out of nowhere boom girl gets pregnant he's having twins just had twins and now he's like in paranoia mode okay what do i have to do now why i don't want to go through that i right. want to already be in the position where okay when it happens oh man we were waiting for this moment we're going to embrace this moment in a great way because all everything we've done two four years ago uh we're doing great now so we're going to embrace having kids in a better way a lot of people don't think that way a lot of people think in the now so i want to kind of go back to that uh, about college why people go to college why the the nine to five life we get sold that what i learned in this business is what's your next you always have to focus on your next what's next what are you what are you going after next as soon as you hit a certain promotion what's next what's next what a lot of people don't do when they go to choose a career when they go to choose a nine to five they don't go and spend time with that person that their their next is so yeah. for example if i'm at a job if i start let's say as a banker because that's what's gonna that was gonna be my route mm -hmm. i was i studied finance i graduated get a degree what's the route go work at a bank cool i go work at a bank what's my first position at bank maybe a teller okay getting 12 15 dollars an hour okay then you go to kind of helping people with their banking checkings whatever opening up accounts mm -hmm. maybe do a little bit of investing you gotta pay a little bit more when i go and i spend time with these people and i ask them hey what what's your next oh my next is you know maybe being the manager of the branch here i'm like awesome like have you gone and spent time one-on-one -on -one with the manager on like not i'm not talking about working i'm talking about outside of work have you built the relationship have you seen the house that they live in have you seen the car that they live in yeah. so wh what am i getting at there that if you're not understanding what's your next and the lifestyle that person is having how do you know that's actually what you want so a lot of people you know they spend 10 15 20 years at a job thinking that this is going to be their next but they've never spent time with that person that's living their next so then what happens is you get there in that position and you're like man this is not what i wanted you know what i mean this is not the house that i wanted to live in this is not the car that i wanted to drive so i spent 20 years of my life chasing my next but i never actually spent time with the person that was already living my next and then guess what you just wasted 20 years of your life what do we have in this company we get to spend time with people that are our next we get what's my next smd emd svp i get to go ask questions hey Haas, what kind of life do you live uh look at your house look at your car okay that's what i want so that's that's the next that i want but people don't do that in the real world they don't go chase and talk to the people that are in that manager you know position or in that next and see if that's the life that you want to live then maybe you're in the right industry if that's not the life that you want you got to reconsider where you're at people are too focused on the right now they're not focused on their next it's the funniest thing because oh, i got uh, so many things to respond with that is so i spent seven six seven years uh no five years getting a college degree 
in engineering. And then I spent two more, so seven total getting my master's. And I am, you know, doing all this to get the life I want. To be an engineer, get that life I want. And then I get it, and I'm like, this is not the life I thought. And then I look at my director, uh, the engineering director of the company. And uh, I see her lifestyle. And she's married to a, uh, it's like a doctor, lawyer who owns like hospitals and practices, okay? So very, very well off. I don't know the numbers, but it's, you know, from the their stature, it sounds like they're doing very well. They have a nice house. And, but she's complaining about money. And I'm like, you are the, one of the top people in this building. I don't know how you complain about money. Like, I don't get it. Mm. Like, it, and it's like, if that's my future, 10, 20, 30 years from now, and you're complaining about money, you're having issues for whatever the case is. I'm like, I don't think this is, that's the future. And the best advice I ever got was, Take advice from people you want to switch places with. Mm. So we always hear, uh, you know, maybe our family, mom, dad, uh, teachers, whoever, they're like, go to school, get a job, get, you know, get a good job, get benefits, 401k, da, da, da. And it's like, they're telling you this maybe because they did it, but their job, their life, I don't, they, I don't want that lifestyle. So I want to take advice from people whose places I switch with, AKA Haas. It's like, Amazing house, amazing family, control of freedom, control of his time, control of his income, uh, you know, a, a great shape, has has a, a, le a legacy built, has his own business, can, like is able to set up his family. His wife doesn't have to go and uh, work for a different company. He can, you know, live, she can live the life she wants and, mm -hmm. and he's the leader of the family and, and, you know, she has, she's a leader in, in her own ways and it's like, wow, he was able to, give so much to his family and his last name and his wife is such a powerful figure and like all she does and same with Curtis and Spring and I'm like wow the the ability to have that option it's like you have that option you don't have to go and get a job and get a degree you don't have to do that but that's what the narrative is that's what we're sold and if you don't know any better and if you don't have someone to take that advice from you, you have no choice. You have to do that 20, 30, 40 years because you don't have any other choice. Then you get locked in with a mortgage. Then you get locked in with a spouse, kids. You don't have that flexibility and that freedom to go explore other options. So we get trapped in the matrix. I agree with you. Well, people do what they know. You gotta. I look back at, okay, Saheed, seven, eight years ago, where was I, right? I was working valet, going to school because that's what I knew was right to do. I didn't know anything else. So people do what they know. Like how many people out there right now are dying to have an opportunity within our company, get the leadership, the mentorship, make the kind of money that we're making, that people are making, but they don't they don't know about it yet. How many millionaires did train us this week on exactly how to make money? Millionaires. So you got Orellana, millionaire, Rodolfo, two million, Massapala, two million. Uh, you have uh, Gaines and Gaines. Sikas. Seek us, okay, so that's five. five. We're probably missing a few. And then guess what? We didn't get trained by some of them that are millionaires that we went up to and had conversations and asked them questions. Right, Ricky Aguilar. Ricky, you got uh, Mason. Mason, yeah. So yeah. you're, it's it, law of proximity. And the, and the thing is, most of them are couples. So not only are we going to the men, the women are going to the women, and it's not five, it's actually 10 millionaires. Mm -hmm. So. It's a uh, plethora, and all they're doing is saying, this is how to get money. This is how to build tax-free wealth. This is how to do it. This is how to do it. And uh, I think, what, to get tutoring or mentorship from a millionaire, how much would that go for? Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. We paid 180 for this event for three days. <laughs> you know what's so funny, man? Uh, I, I, when I, you know, when you, people come in, BOM, you sit with them after, Oh, you know, think about it. This, and people, like, they ask for it. They're in that position, but they don't make a decision. So I always tell people, I'm like, hey, listen, do you think that it's it, it's not the opportunities that's the problem? Maybe it's you that you're the problem. Maybe there's something about you that needs to change for you to have a change. Yeah. Because everybody wants change, but have you changed? Have you changed your decision making? You know what I mean? Like, have you been 
given an opportunity and you still go about it the same way you've gone with the other ones and you miss out because you haven't changed and you don't be like, you know what? I got to change my decision making. And because I'm, I'm someone that I, I love analyzing, collecting data, looking back, people that I come across. And what's so interesting, man, so interesting, before I got into this, I was around people that complained about rich people, that complained about how the wealthy keep all their secrets, yeah. how the wealthy, you know, they, they, they don't want us to know all these things. But then when they're the people that want to teach you everything, hey, let me teach you how to make money. Let me teach you how to become a millionaire. Let me show you an industry that you didn't know before. People are like, oh, I have to think about it. Or I have like, you know what I mean? So it. I want to ask you, with the people that you sit across from that I want to think about it, how, how do you assess that? Like, how, yeah. well, what's your, well, how do you process these people? One thing I love saying is, and this is facts, um, what separates the top 1% from the bottom 99? The ability to make decisions. Because whether you make the right or wrong decision, let's say you make the wrong decision. You take the step the wrong way. Okay, now you can pivot. But if you're just sitting there, and Haas post talks about this all the time, he goes, the doer will always beat the thinker. Just go do, 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 fail. You're mm -hmm. gonna fail, you're gonna fail regardless. No matter, if you do anything, you're gonna fail. Fail quick, learn quick, bounce back. So just make a decision. Um, so like people make bad decisions and emotional decisions all the time. You're out and uh, you're at a gas station and you're just a little hungry. Let me get a gas station uh, burrito. Let me get a gas station hot dog. That's a bad decision, but you emotionally just made a decision. But whenever that comes an opportunity, when it comes to business, and, and this is maybe the thing, I think George Palau said this today, and I wrote this down, and uh, genius. He says, um, you know, maybe you think that uh, it's, um, yeah, I'm trying to get it right. So. People might say, okay, if you start a business, people might feel guilty making money off of their friends and family. But, but it's, if, they, if you're providing a, a value to them and you're giving them generational wealth and, and uh, you know, an infinite banking concept, tax-free strategies, guaranteed retirement, uh, a legacy that's protected, living benefits, uh, expenses paid, peace of mind, you're selling them something that they want and you're allowed to do that, it's legal. Mm -hmm. If you open up a coffee shop and you sell coffee and your fans and family come in and buy coffee, that's okay. But when, I don't, it's just a narrative for some whatever reason. And maybe because people are not business minded. They've never been a business owner. So they think it's a, it's, they feel guilty for selling to friends and family. If you've never been a business owner, you, you might have that guilty conscience of selling to friends and family. But I mean, I was never an entrepreneur at heart, but I always hear stories of people when they're in elementary school, they go buy a bunch of candy, a bunch of soda and resell it. That's okay. But when you provide something that is unknown, maybe an education or something that is against what they've been ingrained, that's where that comes in. But to answer your question, what I said across people is, hey, the top 1% makes decisions. The bottom 99, they, they think and don't. What what uh, what do you think separates them is the ability to make decisions. Even if you make the wrong decision, at least you make a decision you can live with. So I just put pressure on them because I don't, at the end of the day, we have the greatest thing in the world. Financial freedom, legacy building, tax-free strategies. Your legacy, your last name will leave a legacy guaranteed. We can guarantee that. We can guarantee that your legacy will be tied to an asset that's tax-free. Nobody else can do that. Do you think people are maybe afraid that they might? Okay, so I think about it like this. I used to hang out a certain group of people, mm -hmm. okay? They like to party. I used to party with them. They like to drink. I like to drink. Similar, yes. Right? Then I started kind of shifting my focus, making better decisions. Then I started working out. Then I didn't party anymore because I like going to the gym in the morning. And then... Like, I felt a little guilty at a certain point. I'm like, man, I kind of feel you guilty. You love your friends. Yeah, you care about your friends. You care about the people that you spend time with and all that. And then you start feeling a little sense of, like, guilt, right? Because you're doing you're doing better. Your, your decisions are, are, are getting better than the decisions that your friends are making. Smart, logical people obviously are going to make the good decisions, do the right thing, right? Emotional people, sometimes they make emotional decisions. They go back to that. 
I feel that people that make that don't make the decisions is because they don't want to leave that. They Absolutely. Don't, they don't want to. They don't want to feel like you know what? Yeah, I'm doing better than my friends. Like they f they want to comfort other people rather than make decisions for themselves and actually progress in life. We, we we're uh we're pleasing people. We're we're people pleasers. We like n our human nature by heart. You like pleasing other people. We did this when we were little in school. Yeah. We like pleasing other people. Uh, you do this as a grown up. You do this as a man with your woman. We like pleasing. We, you know what I mean? We don't like being uncomfortable, unpleasing. So I think that's where that decision comes into play is that yeah. people don't want to unplease others. So they don't make the decision. They don't be like, man, I'm doing, but now I go back tell my friends, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, business owner, this and that. And they're not, they're working nine to five. They're struggling. They, they're working paycheck to paycheck. So then now you're unpleasing them. And then you're like, I don't want to feel like this. And then boom, you go back to that. So that's how I start kind of unpeeling that onion and, and going layers deep and thinking about myself. Like when I wasn't doing this, when I didn't have this mindset, how did I process things? How did I go about decisions when decision when things came my way? Why didn't I make the decision? And it, it was because of that, because I didn't want to feel like I was doing better than my peers. But then at a certain point, it's 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 a vision. Like your vision starts to shift. You start asking yourself the most important questions. We went over this multiple times. Who do you want to be? What kind of life do you want to live? So uh, I want to ask you a question, because like you said, I, I had bad associations as well. Um, and what moved me to make a decision is it was pain, right? So sometimes it doesn't hurt enough. Why was it? And, and also back to sales, like nobody's ever so, uh, sold anything, but I would see my friends. Uh, so roofing is huge here in Texas. The roofing industry is massive. I have a lot of friends that did the roofing sales, making amazing. I'm probably sure it's big in Florida too. Roofing sales? Yeah, like roof replacements for hail damage. Of course. Yeah. So out here, out in Florida, uh, people make a lot of money doing roofing sales door to door. And I did that for a little bit, and it opened my mind to sales. But if no one's ever done sales, they think, oh, I'm make they feel guilty off making money off people. Why was it okay for you to leave that group and then get into sales? Like, how, how did that mind shift for you? Because that's a mind shift. You have to be, uh, you have to rewire your brain. Cause like you said, we're conditioned to feel guilty. What a great question, by the way. So me, I've been an entrepreneur since I was young. I, I, like you said, Hey, people always say that was me. Really? So okay. that was me. So I, when I was younger, I told you my mom used to do eBay. She used to sell things yeah, on eBay. Right. So we used to go to these warehouses. Uh, the warehouses used to bring things in from China. You know, you buy it by the bulk, you go and sell it individually. So I'd go with my mom and they used to sell the, a pack of a hundred pencils, right? Batman, Spider-Man, Hulk, mm -hmm. uh, Avengers, right? A hundred pencils for a dollar. So I would tell mom, Hey mom, buy me these. Why you want all these pencils? Mom, just buy it for me. She bought me them, right? Then I will go and sell each pencil at school for a dollar. Wow. And so I used to make a hundred dollars off one dollar. Wow. And I was in uh I was in like third grade, second, third grade. I was doing that. And you know what I did with the money? Huh. Uh Mother's Day was coming up. Oh my god. So I goodness. went to the dollar store and I bought a hundred gifts and I hid them all over the house. And on Mother's Day, I'm like, Mom, there's a hundred gifts hidden around the house. Go search for them. And she was so that, right, that was my first entrepreneurship endeavor. Then in high school, I was a sneakerhead, huge sneakerhead. Okay. I was big into sneakers. I've had all the sneakers. I've had all the Jordans. I've had all, I still have some uh, shoes here and there. I have what the Kobe 8s. Mm. I have, like, I was a big sneakerhead, flipping shoes. I would buy shoes, messed up, take them, clean them, paint them, resell them for double, triple what I got them for another way right so i've always had that itch of being an entrepreneur and doing that now going back to being associated in the in the wrong groups what made me change it was literally getting to the bottom of the bottom mm -hmm. getting yeah, to a yeah. point where it was like man if i continue during this route this is the type of life i'm gonna live i don't want to live that life you know what i mean and yeah. i i haven't been very public about the stuff that has happened to me and the situations very small group certain people i'm associated with whatever they know the, the 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 bottom of the bottom 
Uh, but let's just say it, it, it hasn't been pretty. You know what I mean? Like, let's just say that if I ever run for office, uh, a certain picture is going to come up <laughs> of me and it's not going to be pretty. But it's important for me to start being open and sharing about it because I'm sure there's people out there that are in that situation. Absolutely. I'm sure there's certain people out there that are making the wrong decisions that are going down a certain route. And if they don't make the decision to get better, that's the route, that's the life that they're going to live. So I was very conscious of, OK, I'm making this decision. This is where decision and I'm going back. I'm peeling the onion. Right. OK, if I'm drinking, what am I doing? when I'm drinking. I'm fighting. Mm. I'm the aggressive drinker. Now, if I'm the aggressive drinker and I'm getting into these club fights and I'm finding myself arrested in the back of a cop car, uh, where is that going to lead me to? And then it led me to the wrong places. And then I was like, I got, I'm there and I'm like, bro, what am I doing with my life? I can't do this. This is not the life I want. Mm -hmm. I got to change. What has to change? I can't go drink. Now, a lot of people suffer from not changing because they're they don't have the right systems in place so it was my system i started going to the gym but at what time did i go to the gym i will go in the morning really early in the morning i'm talking at five in the morning okay now if that's my system and i have to wake up early guess what i'm not doing the night before You're i'm not going you. out yeah. i'm not going partying i'm staying in the house so I started implementing and putting systems in place that were shifting me and drifting me away from that environment. And then, you know, I'm figuring things out. I'm, I'm you know, because that was a lot of that was during college. A lot of that was it was it was the typical story. You, you get heartbroken, high school sweetheart. You go through your breakup. Now you go party. Now you go numb your pain with drinking and doing this and doing that. And there's internal, uh, uh, you know, things you have going on and you go and devoted to the wrong things yeah. and then you get caught up in trouble, boom, boom. And it just goes domino, domino, yeah. domino. You make a decision. I want to do better. I'm going to go do better. I started doing better. I started finding myself not having any friends because all my friends were partying. And then I'm like right. in an awkward situation where it's like, man, all right, I got to figure this thing out. Finished college, graduated degree during the pandemic. So I graduated uh, December 2020. <coughs> peak pandemic yeah so i'm there got the college degree twenty thousand dollars in debt no guaranteed job and during that time people weren't hiring people were firing yeah so i'm like man all right so i'm doing these uh i'm doing stocks i'm doing crypto i'm figuring things out back to being an entrepreneur being 1099 i've been 1099 since before the pandemic mm. my last uh w2 was i was a server at a restaurant when the pandemic hit server job out the window and then a uh, valet uh out the window it was just hey my last year of college was just college and it was unemployment receiving those you know nice checks yeah. from the government so those checks were being invested and i was investing in the market you know how the market was doing at the time a lot of people made a lot of money i was kind of one of them grab that money send it to columbia because we have businesses over there mm -hmm. um have that cushion there and then just figuring things out had time because my whole out of high school it was work full time college full time that was my life right and then it was in a relationship when that relationship was over that time i was spent with my uh, girlfriend at the time now i had to replace that time with something else what did i replace it with partying and drinking yeah. typical stuff and, and that's the thing man so like um the devil will give you idle time and that's where he attacks you. Oh yeah. So whenever I got my dream job, it's like, okay, I got my masters. I got, I did everything. I got everything. Now I have my job and just enough money and a lot of free time. And that's when I'm partying. And it's like, man, this is, I need to find something. I need to find something to occupy my time because if not, you're just going to go to the bar. Wait, hey, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? Good. Let's go. You want to watch the game? All right, let's go to the, watch the game. And then, oh, you want to get a beer? Okay. Like, it's just so easy. It, yeah, it's so true. easy to just fall back into it. And uh, it, it's very, like, the peer pressure is real. Whether, like, you know, it's not bad. They don't have bad intentions. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, your friends don't really have bad intentions, but it just happens. And it's addicting. And it's fun. Let's call it what it is. It's fun. Hanging mm -hmm. with your boys and drinking. It's fun. But it, it like, I mean... It can only be fun for so long. Like pizza is not fun all the time if you're eating it. <laughs> That's true. Like it, 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 it my can... first job was Papa John's actually. Okay. So I was one of those. I love pizza. Worked at Papa John's. Got tired of it very quickly. Exactly. <laughs>
So um, I want to get into how did you kind of get into PHP? How did uh, you know you step into the insurance world? What was that like? You got recruited. What was your mentality on recruiting? C- kind of go into that. So graduated college, like I mentioned, degree, come out, no job, figuring things out, bouncing from one thing to another. Uh, I've always loved traveling. Uh, that's like all my money. Yeah, I did go party in the club, but I was never, hey, let's get the bottles and let's spend all our money at the club, go spend a thousand, two thousand dollars in one night. That was in me. I went, I had a drink or two, you know, I did the pregame before, so I made sure I was lit by the time I got to a club, so I don't spend all my money there. So I saved a lot, right? I invested a lot, and the time that I spent it, it was traveling. That's what I love doing. I love traveling. So at that time, I was traveling from Colombia a lot, back and forth, back and forth. I go to Colombia, uh, I spent like three months there. It was, so I had, like I said, I had that situation where I found myself in trouble, and then I'm like, all right, I got to go to Colombia and spend some time over there, figure my life out, get clear on what it is that I want to do. I had some time there to think, and this was my plan. My plan was I was coming back to the States. I was going to get an online job, mm-hmm. uh, getting paid dollars, and I was going to move to Colombia. Okay. That was the plan. I was clear on that uh, with my crypto experience because when I was doing the crypto stuff, I did a group. I got a group of 100 people. I started teaching people about crypto when the market was doing great. When the market went down, obviously, people it, yeah. it kind of got disrupted. Uh, so I, I was doing that. So I'm like, okay, I want to do something within crypto. I started applying for online jobs. I got on LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn, polishing things up, boom, 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 get a DM. Hey, man, you, you keep your options. So I got prospected through LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Now, the guy that prospected me through LinkedIn, I knew him because we worked at the same hotel when I used to work in the hospitality industry during college. Mm -hmm. I I, I knew him, never encountered him, never met him, but I knew who he was. Very good with phases. So when he hit hit me up, I'm like, all right, boom. Uh, He spoke to me. He was also into crypto, into stocks, into investing. I remember we jumped on a phone call. Quick phone call. Uh, He was obviously going to set a meeting up. Long story short, I'm on the phone with this guy for like two hours. Oh, wow. We're talking about crypto. We're talking about uh, content. We're talking about educating people on crypto and finances and money, this, that, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, man, listen, I'm part of a company. If if you're looking to do a remote job, uh, you should consider you can do this remotely. Let's set up a Zoom call. I'm like, let's do it. I've, I've, I'm always very open, bro. I'm not someone that's like, no, I'm this. I'm very open to things. I want, I'm like, cool. Sets up the, the call. And like I told you, you know, when we were spending some time, I, I was a Patrick fan. I was watching Patrick at the time on YouTube. Love Patrick. And I was telling him about, hey, I'm with this guy and I watch him, blah, blah, blah. So I jump on the Zoom one day and I get, you know, introduced to the man, Mr. Hasbusi. That's, yeah. that's the guy who did my RI on wow. Zoom. So I'm there, right? I got the, at the time I was doing the whole like content stuff. So I have my desk, lights in the back. It looks cool. Headphones in, microphone. Mm -hmm. So I hop on the call. I'm going to be honest with you. All I remember was being told Patrick McDavid, CEO and founder. And my first thought was, is this guy doing this on purpose? Just to like, yeah, it's BS. Like, is he doing this on purpose to kind of rail me in? Because I told him I'm into Patrick or whatever coincidence is it not whatever so i kind of you know put my guards up yeah i put my guards up and the whole time i'm not paying attention but i'm listening to haas mm-hmm. i'm listening to him his his en- bro his energy man his energy is is on another level so i'm like all right i'm listening boom 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 and guess guess uh who i was i was one of those i'm gonna think about it Okay, let me process it. Oh, you got to pay one. Let me think about it. And he was like, all right, cool, bro. You know, whenever you're ready, hit me up. So I started thinking, thinking. I'm like, what got me? You know what he what he told me that got me? Mm-hmm. He goes, brother, what's the worst that could happen? You learn something new. You get your license. You know, you help a family or two. You get all your money back. You choose not to do it. Uh, or maybe you get really good at it and you like it and this is what you want to do. So I'm like, all right. At the time, I was, I was driving for one of my best friend's uh, dad's company, Boca Lux Limo, uh, chauffeuring. And guess who I was chauffeuring? Millionaires and billionaires. Uh-huh. 
that was who I was driving around. So I had so much time doing this job, learning from these people, talking to these people, building relationships. I go and I put it on my contacts, Boca Lux. I have hundreds of names and all these people, millionaires, billionaires. And I was like, I absorb so much knowledge and so much stuff from these people while I was doing this job. And I learned that decision making. Yeah. Decision. Can you un like if you don't make a decision, like, are you going to like not have a experience that might be good for you? Like, you're only going to have that experience if you make that decision. So I called them up. I'm like, all right, bro, you know, here's my credit card, whatever it is. Let me know. Boom. I paid for it. Then, you know, the orientation, go to the office. And I remember, hey, sitting down, Naveen does my fast start. And I remember she goes to the fast start packet. She says, hey, MD, this is you living in Colombia and, and making good money, working from home. I was like, done. So what do I have to do? Boom, boom, boom. Trainings, Tuesdays, Saturdays. And I'm someone, man, that when I do something, I'm, I'm not, I don't like half-assing, you know? So if they told me, hey, trainings, Tuesdays and Saturdays, I'm like, cool. The job I was doing with driving, the guy, bro, he is awesome. I'm like, hey, listen, I need Tuesday nights, Saturday mornings off because I just got started uh, with this firm. Boom, boom, boom. He's understanding. Just clear. Very clear. I love was, it. I'm the boom. same way. And supportive, too. Very supportive. Awesome. I love that. Okay, awesome. Now I know not to put you on the schedule. And that was my commitment. My commitment was I was going to start going to the trainings twice a week, no matter what, going. It took me a while to get my license, by the way. It took me like a good month to get my license. I was BSing. I wasn't spending time on it. And I didn't really study, but I was going to the trainings. And I just remember going to the trainings, and I just remember being around Haas. And all I said was, man, listen, I just need to be around this guy. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it, I just need to be around someone like him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's, that's what I, I started going and going. And then I got started in November. So check this out. I get started on like a Wednesday. I get coded up, boom, 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 do my orientation. And guess what was on a Saturday? Be on. Fast start. Fast start. Oh, fast start. Okay. It was fast start school. And this fast start school, guess where it was at? It was at a hotel. Okay. And it was, you know, big heart. And you know what happened in that fast start? I go into that fast start. I remember being there. And Haas was in competition. Guy was on fire. Bro, he was like, he threw his phone. Like, it was a whole thing. And I was like, man, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know what I got myself into, but I love this. And whatever this is, I'm going to commit to coming to these trainings. Because I'm not worse off coming. I'm better off yeah. coming. Well, so you qualified I, for Fast Start School. I did. You, you did. I qualified for okay, Fast okay, Start okay. School. So... Because I come from sports, I'm very coachable. So and when I did my fast start, yeah, very so you're competitive. Like, you're like most people don't do this. All right, bet, watch me. No, no, yeah, bro. I love whatever that energy, man. You can't like you can't fake that. You cannot fake energy. So when you're around that environment, when you're there, when you're around that, when you see Haas, you just I just met him. Boom, he's there competing. Boom, fired up. I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I want to be around it. Yeah. Started coming, bro, to the trainings. And then guess what? The whole December, you know what it was? It was driving people to go to regional event. Mm -hmm. So I am a product of a big event. Okay. I'm a product of a big event. Why? Because the whole December, it was driving regional, regional, regional. Now remember, bro, just like many of us. What year is this? Got started in the business 2022, November 2022. Okay. And so going into 2023. Going into 2023. Oh, so, so you haven't been in there. No, You're just a little longer than me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just okay. Yeah, me and you are two months apart. Yeah, literally. Two months apart. Yeah. So I go to regional event. I did PHP part time. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I did PHP part time last year, trained the trainers. I came back, I went full time. Okay. Five months after, I became MD. Okay. So I go to regional event. The last region, TTT in Dallas, yeah. Last TTT in Dallas. Guess, so yeah. so I get started in November. We were literally on the same timeline. That's Pretty so much. amazing how like we were just now I meeting. know, I know. So check this out. November, <laughs> December, it was all regional. Yeah. And I remember I just paid my one ninety nine. I'm like, these people are like, yeah, you got to go here and you got to pay for your hotel and your flight. And I'm remember going back to what? Being coachable. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this guy has boosty. This guy's doing great things. He's, do he's making good money. He's running his business. If he's telling me to do this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Why am I questioning someone that is actually successful and showing me? I went to college 
I learned and, and, and listened to people that were not making the money I want to make. And if they're telling me to go and study this book and take this exam and I'm doing it, why am I not going to learn from, why, why am I not going to do something from someone that's successful that's yeah. making money? Makes no sense. So I go to regional. I'm a product of a regional event. I go there. It was done. I came back. I got focused. Bro, guests. Me, it was guests. At one point, I, I, I like you, you went after the record. Ten yeah. uh, guests at a BOM. I had seven. Okay. They've never had no seven guests. Boom. Then it started going. Then, then I uh, recruited a guy, uh, Alejandro. I known him since he was little, and he, guess what? He was starting with a prior company. Got his Excel solutions. Was doing it. Didn't pursue it. He was prospect. He was on a Zoom call with Haas as well. Did not pay attention. A guy that got started told him about it. Boom. He wasn't paying attention. Whatever. I hang out with him. I told him, you need to come to BOM. So he first got like introduced to the business over Zoom, didn't buy it. I told him, come to BOM. He came to BOM. He didn't get started the first time. I followed up with him. We went and played soccer. I'm just, everything I absorbed from Haas, I poured into him. Yeah. I was like, brother, look, bro, this is where we're going. This is what you need to be around. Boom, 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 boom. He, he come, got started. Now, bro, he's about to be an MD. Killing it, bro. Crushing it. Identity shift completely. Like, and you know what he was doing? Uh, also, before uh, Train the Trainers? Mm. Actually, no. I think it was Train the Trainers or Regional. Bro, he went to also another product of a big event. He went. He was selling alcohol-infused uh, ice cream. Okay. He was managing, uh, you know, selling ice cream. Boom, he goes to a regional event. I remember we come, we come back from the regional event. He goes to work. And I knew he was working. He texted me, hey, brother, are you at the office? I'm coming. I was like, bro, I, I thought you were working. He goes, I just quit. He just quit. Bro, he comes. That was my running mate. That was my flag carrier. He was the exchange leg. He was the one that helped me, you know, uh, get to MD. Mm -hmm. Exchange leg direct to Haas. And then, boom, you know, here we are. And I'm nowhere near where I want to be. But what keeps me in this game and what's going to keep me in this game is my gratitude for Haas. Yeah. I cannot, like, I would be the most, un and I've seen it, bro. I've seen it. I've been around the people that got started before I got started. And I've seen Haas devote time to these guys. I've seen Haas train these guys. I've seen Haas, you know, day in and day out for these guys. And these guys weren't grateful for it. And I cannot see myself not being that. Bro, why, why is that the case? Because we have... People like Haas, Curtis, Matt, Rodolfo, and they, I mean, C Cecilia, Cece was just talking about it on stage. Hey, Sundays are only day off, and we will spend hours with the newest person to pour into them and train them when we have kids at home and a family at home, but we're taking the time out of our only day off. We're going to spend hours to train the newest person and pour into them, and people still give up or quit. Why do you think that is when when someone of that stature, someone of that identity is trying to, you know, pour into you? Hey, this is what I did to get where I'm at. Let me show you exactly what to do. And people will be like, ah, I don't know. Maybe I'm uncomfortable. Maybe it seems like too much work. Maybe well, what is it? Why does that happen? It's very simple. It's vision. It's lack of vision from the moment I met Haas. He had a vision. He was, it was always vision, man. It mm. was always vision. It was always dream selling. And what happens is that people lack that. People lack vision. People lack clarity. People are, are they're, they're, they're too stuck up in the way they are. They're too stuck up in the things that have happened to them. They're too stuck up in the wrong things and not how they can change, how they could improve. And they're not focused on the vision. Where are you going to be five, ten years from now? You know, when I got started and I'm around Haas, I'm like, I know where this guy's going. Right. Because he has the vision, bro. He lives by the vision. What he says he's going to do, he does it. If I stay around this guy long enough, it's a matter of time. But guess what? People love instant gratification. And people like to be um, master. No, it's uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. They get pulled into too many directions. You know, they get in a point in their business. where there's credibility that way. You lose credibility, bro. What picture did we see o over there uh, that that Matt went over? The yes. somebody posted, yeah. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a herbalist, I'm a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> up and, and coming comedian, up it was a, bro. Like, like twenty different things. It's like, bro, I don't trust you. 
No, so that's that's what happens. And I'm going to be honest, there's been points in my career where my lack of vision starts pulling me to do other things. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of trading here, focus on this. Oh, I'm going to do a little bit of content here and try to be a content creator. And why? Because I, I, I lack a certain vision at that time. Mm -hmm. And for me, when coming here, that was one of my number one outcomes coming to this event was my vision needs to get very clear. There you go. Because I'm going back and I'm going all in. I'm burning all the bridges. No more. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. I'm at and I've gotten to this level. So think about that. Like a lot of people, you know, within our office, they see me marketing director, this and that. I'm still going through my phase. Like I'm still learning. I, I'm not perfect. I still have a lot to learn. I still have to, a lot to improve. But guess what happens? The moment that a lot of people that got to the same point that I got to where they started having that difficulty, those hardships, they could not handle understanding they had to get better. They can't take and they the didn't. heat. They can't take the heat. And guess what? Haas, I've seen Haas win at the highest level, and I've seen Haas lose at the highest level. And when you learn the most is when you see your leader lose at the highest level and see how he reacts. Ten toes down, optimistic, clear vision. You know what? Losses is what's going to... Losses, if you don't like Michael Jordan, for example, let's talk sports. If it wasn't for the Detroit Pistons, do you think Michael Jordan would have uh, won six championships? Oh, how much bro, did he, he lose? was pissed. How much did he lose? He lost hard. How much did he get abused? Oh, he, he beat up, like destroyed he, the whole summer. He was in the weight room just to be able to compete with them. You think that if Michael Jordan never went through those losses, he would have been the Michael Jordan we know today? No. So how I, we spoke about this, people don't study greatness. Yeah. People don't study. People, you know, when people come to these events, they see Matt Sapala, Rodolfo making all this money, all these people, millionaires. But they don't go ask the questions, what did you go through that was the hardest and how did you overcome that? They're too focused on millionaire, oh, and this, oh, what? Bro, you got to understand the journey. What They've did been they there go for like through? 10, 11 years. 10, 11 years. Like, I've gone and I've studied Rodolfo. I've gone to YouTube. I've watched his videos. I've, uh, you know, his story. Him and Ceci, they've done some content at a certain point. Jose Marlene Gaitan, Patrick Bed David. I've studied these people, what yeah. they've gone through. So when I'm going through this phase of difficulty, of challenges, of not being what I want to be, I'm like, this is normal. You know, Haas is like, Bro, when we have our setbacks, I get excited. I what do you mean, coach? What do you mean you get excited? Oh, that's oh I powerful. get excited because I know that I'm about to go to my next. I'm about the great things about to happen. You know what I mean? Setbacks like Rodolfo speaks about it, too. When things happen, you know what he says? When horrible things happen with setback time, he goes, great things are about to happen. Mm -hmm. But guess what happens when you enter that tunnel and you're in that darkness? You get so caught up in the darkness that you know what you start doing? You start going back and yeah. forth. You end up crashing. And guess what? You don't end up at the end of the tunnel and you don't end up seeing sun the, the, the sunset, the sunrise, the light. People get too caught up in what that darkness is about and not understanding that if you just keep going, you keep pushing, the tunnel is going to end at a certain point. Rain and thunder is going to end at a certain point. Have we ever seen rain and thunder forever? No. Never. You see sunrise sunset you see sunshine you see heat at a certain point so a lot of people get too caught up in the rain and they don't wait it out yeah. and the moment as soon as i've seen it so many times it's insane the moment the person is about to undergo their explosion right on, bro boom, literally bro and that's one of the most um oh, it, it's, it's hard being a leader because you can't turn it off like almost like being a father or a mother you can't turn off being a father or mother you can't turn off being a leader. And I've, you know, brought people in and they are on the verge. They have a phenomenal market. They have like ex amazing credibility. They have a, uh, you know, an, an amazing work ethic. And it's like, you know, just going through, going through. And it's like, hey, it's been a month, maybe two months. And they're like, oh, well, I'm, I haven't made a few thousand dollars yet. It's like, when when do businesses start making money? Like, come on. and And... It, it's it is what it is it's like that meme where the guy's like the caveman's digging for the jewels and then he backs oh, away bro, and I then the, uh, it's picture. right there it's right there and usually it's the way god works man is like okay whenever you make phone calls you call let's say you call 10 people and you're like everyone's like not picking up saying no and you're like 
you know what? I'm I'm, I'm about done. I'm, I'm about to give up. I'm about to give up. You're like, let me make one more. Let me make one more call. Call one more, and it's like, oh, I would love to be there. I'd love to get on a call. I'd love to learn more. It's like, I almost just gave up. Mm -hmm. But that's what God does, bro. It's like the first ten or not. That's not the first ten you're supposed to go through is to get that one. You go you go talk to people. You get or, or let's like captain system, right? Let's say you get uh you, you meet four people and you put them on captains and uh, you're like, Oh, you know, I'm good. I'm good. But it's like, no, those four are not gonna show up. It's the ninth one that well, you were supposed to talk to. So you have to realize that God is not going to make it easy because if he makes it easy, everyone would be walking around a millionaire. Everyone would be walking around a billionaire. Everyone would be walking around with perfect marriages. Everyone would be walking out with no issues if mm -hmm. it was easy. So it, it's those moments where, and I love that Haas like says that, and I can already feel the energy shift when you talk about what he talks about. Like the, 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 Everything we just like you and you and me have high energy right now because we just got poured into by millionaires for like three consecutive days. So our energy is up to the standard of what millionaires energies are. Millionaires have high energy mm -hmm. because energy money is all just energy. Whoever has the most energy wins. What I, what I want to know is, man, I, I, he, I Haas is a person that is I revere. I look up to I see and I haven't really spent too much time with him just kind of from a distance. What's it like working alongside him, getting poured into? What's what's his accountability like? What's the the day to day like? What what are some things that stand out? Kind of just go deeper on who he is as a man and as a husband, as a father. Great question, bro. Great question, man. So let's talk leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's a leader? A leader leads by what? Example. By example. So what have I seen from Haas from the moment I met him? I've seen somebody that is a bro he's a worker you know what his quote is life is work mm. he goes the moment that he realized life is work his life completely changed because if like if you ever hear his story he also comes from partying having fun back in the uh, in the days they used to call him two bottle boosy so he used to walk <laughs> around the club with with two bottles you know and he'll tell you that this. i didn't know oh this. man listen you, if you if you ever uh, when, when you get to spend time with him, his story, bro, powerful, power. Like a lot of people see Haas and like I said, study the history with it's a decision. So the moment he realized life is work and he went all in and he moved from Michigan to Florida and got married and a family boom. And he made that decision. Everybody is one decision away from their life completely changing. He made that decision. So. I'm I'm Mihas, right? And it's funny you say that. I'm sorry to cut no, you off. Good. People don't make decisions and you're they don't one make decision. decision away from changing your life forever. Completely. And he says it, many people say it. So what's it like being around him? Um like you said, man, it's energy. It's it's passion. Like you feel the passion. You feel the that his vision, like you cannot fake vision. Like when you hear Rodolfo's vision, you feel it, you know it's true. When you hear Patrick, when you know that, let's think, let's think about Patrick. Patrick started PHP with no carriers, all vision. Why <laughs> did people stick around? Why did like they didn't get their first carrier thing like two years into the business? How was people sustaining being with Patrick Beth David for two years without having a product or a service to even sell? It was all vision. So it's vision. Haas has a vision. He believes it solely. He lives by it. He is building the greatest leaders the industry is ever going to see. Like, it, like is period. That's what it is. That's what it's been from day one. We're going to build the greatest leaders the industry has ever seen. And I'm going to be one of those leaders. Mm -hmm. And being around him and just duplicating. And now the accountability part. It's hard, but the accountability is different at different levels. Right. You know what I mean? So I've gone through different levels and now I'm at a certain level. Accountability is a certain level. Um, but it's also I relate so much to it, man. Like I they call me mini Haas. OK, mm. it's probably the best compliment that yeah. anybody can receive is being called the mini Haas. You know, I'm they say I'm well spoken. I never knew I had a talent for speaking until I was put around the environment and also seeing someone that's that's like that. So he energy, well spoken, passionate. This is one thing me and him have in common. And it was it's been one of his downfalls that the moment that he 
learned that about himself and changed it. His business went to the next level. And it's one of my downfalls. You know what it is? We care so much for people. We care too much for people that they care for themselves. So he's found himself. I found myself caring so much, bro, for someone that they don't care about themselves. They don't care about getting better. They don't care about putting in the time. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, be he's he's so passionate, bro. He cares so much, man. He 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 really wants to make a difference. He really wants to make an impact. He really wants to make a change. I know where he's going, and uh, I don't see myself not being around that. And me going away from that is like being the most ungrateful person in, in the world. And I couldn't live with myself not being around house and not really coming through for him. And the most important thing is about staying optimistic. You got to stay optimistic. For example, I think about Rodolfo. How long did it take Rodolfo Vargas to find a house boosie? Took him 10 years in the business? 10 years. 10 years in the business. Who's uh, Rodolfo's number one? Who's, who's the flag carrier for WTP? So it depends what you define a flag carrier so, as. I mean, Ahas is VP, one of the uh, greatest organizations, but I, I just, I'm asking because I, I don't know too much about that organization. Like flag that. carrier, different stages, but different, you got to understand different philosophies. Uh -huh. Like, for example, is. Is the flag carrier somebody that made a million dollars? Then you would say the flag carrier is uh, David and Sandra Vera. Oh, that's right. He's uh, okay. they're part of Vargas. But, but is he building other leaders and duplicating? That's not what we see. Got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, what's his philosophy? Maybe his philosophy is not the philosophy of the company, of building leaders, duplicating mm -hmm. leaders, building millionaires, building other people, right? That's what I've seen. Okay. Um, other flat carry. You, you. What, what's a flat carry? Somebody that. Let's start with the uh, largest organization, butts and seats. Butts and seats. Okay. Uh, we are. We were butts and seats. House thir uh, number thirteen in the entire company at TTT. Okay. Butts and seats thirteen. That's not. That's not bad. That's yeah. really good, right? Yeah. Butts and seats. Right now, uh, Haas. He's got one of the uh, biggest associate accounts at. Uh, coming to trainings you know mm. he he fluctuates between 40 and 50. Mm. think about that right yeah. there are certain people in the company i'm not going to mention names they make the income they do all this but they only got like nine ten people oh, coming to meetings. yeah we oh there's people there are people in and this is the beauty of the industry there's people making half a million dollars with two people coming to meetings three <laughs> people come but it's philosophies but that's the beauty of the industry you can go and make a million dollars by yourself you can or you can go and make a million dollars as a team. So like the, you, you're, it's whoever you wanna be. It's whoever, but you also have to align yourself with the company's philosophy. What's PHP's philosophy? What oh, was Patrick's philosophy? To save America and by bringing back hope and free enterprise but what was, to American what companies. was his, his to philosophy do that, to was do that. duplicating leaders. But, but yeah, so to save America and bring back hope and free and enterprise to American families, you have to impact lives. You have to build people. You have to, uh, there you go. You have to take someone. So if you're just making money off them, you're not really impacting the lives to the maximum. Exactly. Like, yeah, you can teach one person how to make a million dollars, but can you teach someone to build two, three, four, five, ten people how to do that? Patrick did that. You know what a master builder is? Yeah, so it's a uh, teaching three people how to make a million dollars and uh, have a million point base shop three years in a row. There you go. So Patrick Ben David is the only person uh, in PHP. Is he, I don't think it's in the industry. I don't know if it's in the industry, but I know it's a uh, uh, PHP. Only so he PHP. did that. Now, let's think about who are that, who's that next layer. So direct millionaires, how many does Matt uh, and Sheena Sapala have? They have two. So they are, Chris Hart is, if once Chris Hart gets a million, it's but solid. right now, currently, currently, uh, he, uh, it's a uh, Mason and um, it's only Mason. It's oh, only no, there's someone else. I thought maybe it is only Mason. Yeah, one. Yeah, right. Uh, Rodolfo Vargas. How many direct millionaires does he have? It's Sandra, What's David and Sandra Vera. David, uh, David and Sandra Vera. And then guess who's coming up? Marcelo. Oh, Gaines though. Gaines has a... Uh, but I don't think Gaines is direct to uh, Matt and Sheena Spala. No, 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 no. I'm saying Gaines has the structure to be a master builder because he has David and Alyssa Sika. Okay, okay. We, then, we're going somewhere. So I, I, Me personally, um, Rodolfo. 
I'll tell you why Rodolfo. Because no, Rodolfo is definitely Rodolfo, competing. He's, he's competing. He's going to be a master builder because he's about to promote two, and he's going to have three in no time. So now that's the competition. Who's going to yeah. promote uh, three? We're in competition. Ma- pretty much. We are in competition. No, we yeah. are. Yeah. So, so That's so exciting. It, very exciting. That's so exciting. So Rodolfo, in my opinion, right? Jose, he's got two. Because he has Ricky. He's got Ricky and Orellana. Oriana, so he's so, he's one away. So he's closer than. He's closer, but, but have you seen him on the on the leaderboard? Uh, well, that's a different, completely different conversation. I would say. You know, so that's where we're at. It's about who's building the company today. Yeah, yeah. You know, look what Jose has done. But did we see him train at all during train the trainers? Not no, at all. No, 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 no. So because uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but correct me and correct me if I am. He had he, it's base shop, right? So it's, it's base shop. So yeah. yeah, they're not building the base shop uh, as they're not in the base shop game right now in this season. Exactly. So, but yeah, that's that's kind of where. Okay, so going back to uh, the, I want to refer back to what we were talking about. About Haas. About Haas. Yeah. So yeah, man, it, it's just vision. It's just vision. Is is being around that vision, adopting that vision, believing in that vision, and like i said it's passion man you cannot fake that like why does he have so much passion why does he want to build the greatest leaders the industry's ever seen because he's been clear about his vision from day one Mm. and that's what made patrick great because patrick was very clear on his vision from day one saving america by bringing back free enterprise and hope to american families has been the vision from day one is the vision today and we're going after that vision and no matter if he's here or not we've adopted that vision and we're going after that vision is having a clear vision and then when you're around someone that has their vision that's so 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 clear you start identifying what's my vision what do I want my life to be like? You know, what, how, who am I going to be five, ten years from now? And then you start mapping it out and you start getting clear and clear and more clear about it. And, more, and then when that vision is truly, truly clear, then guess what? You know what to do because we all know what to do. We don't have a what to do problem. We know to, how to make phone calls. <laughs> we know how yeah. to prospect. We, we know what to do. The playbook is there for you to study it and just copy and paste but is your vision clear enough for you to go through those setbacks of calling 15, 20, 30 people and not getting an answer and still being okay with it? That person that's resilient, that's still going to make that phone call because they have a clear vision. And what, okay, oh, beautifully said, man. Beautifully, beautifully said. What is your vision? Okay, what's my vision? What's so your vision? I'm still mapping it out, but my vision with Wealth Warriors, it's uh, building uh, fortunes one warrior at a time. Okay. So I want to takes one person to buy into that same vision of building fortunes one warrior at a time. Uh, why a lot of people ask me, man, why is you know warriors, you know wealth warriors, why warriors? I have a creed, a creed that I adopted from Navy SEALs. The mil- like I told you, like I wish I would have went to the military. I wish I would have gone down that route. Be- We're so parallel, brother. We're literally like the same person because I wanted like I have a uh, guilt that I never joined. And so yeah, man, it's it's that one thing that if people always say, man, what is missing in your resume? It's that. Yeah, it's just that because you you don't know unless you experience it. Yeah. And the, the the way I compare it to like people that ride motorcycles. I used to ride motorcycles. Mm. You don't know what it feels like until you actually get on one and you drive and you ride a motorcycle. Yeah. No one that's not, never driven a motorcycle would never be able to describe, explain, and understand what it feels like. Yeah. Same thing with the military. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know what you go through unless, like, I've asked my dad, and he can try to explain it, but he can never give me that feeling that he got. Yeah. Impossible unless you do it. So going back, wealth warriors. You know, what's a warrior, man? Let's define a warrior. What's a warrior? A warrior. I mean, I'm probably going to butcher the actual definition, but someone that doesn't give up, relentless, is going to basically fight till death. Fight till death. Fight till so death. So you said a key word there, relentless. Relentless, yeah. Tim Grover, what is he? Tim, yeah. Relentless. What do people lack? Let's Resiliency. Be Resiliency, being relentless. That's a warrior. So when I was sitting there thinking about, you know, what is my company my business one day gonna be like what who do i want to attract because i envision my team before i have my team right 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 and it was very interesting because as i'm building my base shop as i was building my base shop you know what started coming a lot Hmm. 
was people that have served in the military. I had a, at a well, we had about 15 people come into meetings. I would say about 90% of them had served in the military. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I envisioned that. Why do I want people that served in the military? Because they have the morals and the values that I stand for. And the discipline. And the discipline. I want people that are disciplined. I want people that are organized. I want people that are structured. I want people that are going to wake up, be resilient. I want people that, you know, are going to put themselves, they're going to put other people first before themselves. Right, right, So that's right, right. my vision. I want to put other people before I put myself. Because I want to... I want my name to live after generations yeah. that one day somebody goes, they see a statue of me and like, hey, this guy right here, he put himself like way last. It was others before him. That's a true warrior because in the military, those infantry, right? Marines, when they go in first, they're putting themselves way last. Is their country first? Is the people back home first? Is everyone else except themselves? Right. They're putting themselves on the line. So for me, I correlate a lot to that, man. Resiliency, um, being relentless. And I'm still redefining it because you, you don't understand that when you're winning. You mm. understand that when you're losing. And yeah. we're, we're going through certain phases in our business where uh, we're having more of the setbacks uh, than the wins. I've had the wins, you know, oh, out here at the office, boom, our MD and this and recognition. And sometimes you get too caught up in that and then you start losing and everybody goes through those losses and those setbacks. And it's like, all right, so are you going to live by what you claimed your name to be? Are you going to live by what your vision is to be, to be resilient, to be relentless, to go through the challenges? Uh, you have nobody here. You have nobody with you. You're by yourself. Are you going to thrive off of that? Are you going to be resilient? Are you going to or are you going to wussy out and completely dismiss what you stand for in the first place? Yeah. And so that for me is I, I, I embrace that. But also I can't be in the state for too long. I that then now it's me being like choosing that. Now I'm choosing to be here. I, I can't choose that. You know what I mean? So now we're in a stage where we have to really show our gratitude for house. Mm -hmm. Because us winning is showing our gratitude to them. Yeah, he spent time with us. He's built us. He's he, the level of trust that Haas has given me and my wife is on another level. Like he's trust us with his son, bro. Yeah. Like we've taken his son by ourselves. Me and my wife, we took him and we played with him. We took him to a park and this like that is a level different level of trust right, like right. you you can't you know what i mean like there has to be a certain relationship there so how do i show my my gratitude and this is the conversation that we have amongst that team amongst everybody within the office guys we got to show our gratitude and they see it when they come to these events because you got other people they go up to him hey can i process things and i tell everybody i'm like hey guys we really got to show out we yeah. really we really have to come through because if us winning is is showing that we're grateful for our leader and i'm gonna be honest man and this is me being transparent i'm gonna lay, lay it out go ahead that's how i am go ahead be clear me i believe that i have the best leader yeah and i don't care what no one says rodolfo too our organization we have the best leaders that's what i believe and you should think that way and, and i believe that curtis and spring are the best leaders and matt and sheen are the best leaders there you go. Hey, now, hey. now our job and our duty and our responsibility is to what is to win at the highest level exactly. is, is okay. What organization is going to take up the most percentage of that stage? Mm -hmm. Who's up there the most, right? Who's out there Today, representing? No, this it was Rodolfo. It was Rodolfo. No, no. And, and we noticed that we all noticed that. So it is what it is. And we're going to do what we're going to do. And that's our responsibility. Right. And guess what? If we're winning, they're winning right and us winning only means that the people that are are a part of our organization are also winning right so it's a win-win all around and then guess what when php is at the top of the mountain and we are all winning and then guess what we got a huge headquarters php headquarters enormous we not we don't have one building we got multiple buildings absolutely and when we're all up there and we're, we're a billion dollar company and then we're all multi-millionaires five six seven eight hundred 
we're all gonna be like, man, it, it, we, we 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 lived it up to it. We lived up to that mission and that vision, because we all gotta align ourselves some way somehow. Like when me, when I'm not clear about my goals or my next, what do I do? The first thing I do is align myself with House's goals. Mm. Coach, what do what do you what, like? What do you need? What's your next? Is your next chairman council? What do you need for chairman? What do you need from us? Okay, got it. Boom. Because sometimes you got to be a great number two right. to be a great number one. Every boss was once the best student. Every great leader was once a follower. So, um, Like, for example, uh, how long was Sorry to Cut You Off? Think about Matt and Rodolfo. Uh -huh. they, they were Pat's number twos for a long time. Absolutely. And now what are they doing? They're being number ones exactly. for PHP. So that's that's how it is. So for us, sometimes when we having setbacks and we're not clear about what we want, we just align ourselves with our leaders' goals. So easy. It's so easy because they've been there. Um, what is um something that you have taken from Haas and implemented on a day to day basis, uh, or or something that you try to uh, magnify in your life that he embodies? Uh, it's not about you. It's about others. Okay. It, it's not about your goals. It's about helping someone else get to their goals. It's about going out there and and searching for whose life you're gonna change. Okay. Because it's it like it's him. Uh, hey, it's not about me. It's about you guys. Right. I'm here for you guys. Um, like I'm putting in the time for you guys, but I want to see you guys win, and you guys need to win. And we're all going to win together. But for me, it's the work ethic, man. It's it's I'm going to be transparent with you because I'm, I'm a transparent guy. That's my leak. Mm. And that's our team's leak. And that is the conversations that we were having last night at our Airbnb till 2.33 in the morning. Is that, guys, you know, because you know what happens with us? I'm going to be honest. We're good looking. We're sharp. We dress good. Shoulders high. What do what do we duplicate? How Haas walks around. How does Haas walk around? Shoulders high, walks around, owns the room. You know, we're here. Whether we're winning or we're losing, we're here. This is who we are. You know, at regional event, people knew we were with Haas without us telling them. is because the way we walk, right. because the way we look, right? So sometimes that can get in, like, that can blur us a little bit because, okay, we're good looking. We're well spoken. We're very talented, Right. And we think that's the only thing that's going to get us there. It's not his work ethic, brother. It's the same thing with Max life right now. We have a good looking team. We all have talent. We all have ability. We all have, um, you know, amazing reach network. And we look and we're like, because we're not a VP team. So it's like all we need is paid points. So we sit down and we're like, it's just our work ethic. That's it. So it's so it, funny, bro. It, it's, it's actually it is thing. so funny, and that's all it is. And when, when I'm sitting there, I'm looking up there on the stage, I'm like, they don't look better than us. They don't walk better than us. They don't speak better than us. We're, we're better than they them. They don't. But like, guess like, what? Let's they, call it what it is. I know I'm better than them. I'm just not working harder than them. That's it. And they got, and they deserve to be up there because they worked harder than me. That's so it. So kudos to you. But how I'll do you, you process next. that? Because as a man, yeah. it's hard to process the fact that another man is outworking you. Well, it's not just that. He cares more about his family and his dreams and goals than you do. His vision is more clear, mm. maybe. He's got a more clear vision. He's willing to be at the office a little longer because he knows where he's going. Yeah. And I'm glad that you we had this vision talk because as I'm, as you're telling me this, and this is, this is why I love this podcast because this is training. We're, like, we're continuing the training. We, well, you and I are debriefing for the past, let's say, three, four hours, just what we just took in from millionaires and how to implement that in our life. So that's the value that we're able to do right now, which, which I'm realizing is I need to make my vision more clear. And I've written it down before, but it's not something I have like memorized. So my, my, my vision is uh, my, my brand is called Money Marathon is to um, – help families break the generational curse and create generational wealth starting today. So break that chain. We're going to create generational wealth starting today and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to compound over years because it's a marathon. So that's the vision. But I think I need to be more clear. I need to be more clear. I need my team to know how clear it is because you just said what Haas's vision is, is to build the greatest leaders in the industry. Clear. 
So it, it's simple. just simple, clear. And it's like, okay, I need to make it more clear, more simple. And then make sure that all my people know this is what we're doing. This is what we're, not just them, but anyone I walk across, this is what I'm doing. If you want to talk more, we can talk more. And, but the, the energy changed right there. You heard the energy change. Oh yeah. I need to come with that every time. You, but so going back to clarity, um, and I'm sorry if I cut you no, off. Go ahead, go ahead. So clarity. Okay. What makes that vision more clear is what do I have to do on a day to day basis to fulfill that vision? So for example, Haas's vision, build the greatest leaders the industry has ever seen. What does he do on a day to day basis? He reads all leadership books. Mm. He studies the greatest leaders that have come in sports and in industries. He studies all of them. What do they do? How did they do it? What was their sequence? Donald Trump. Uh, he read a book, Donald Trump. He looked at Donald Trump's schedule. Bro, it's like, oh, I, I got to get my schedule in order. I got to be able to, you know what I mean? So yeah. he's, he's, he's literally every single day, He's working on himself to be that leader that he needs to be to build the greatest leaders the industry is ever going to see. So with you, if that is your vision, are you learning everything that has to do with money and wealth to be able to go right. provide that education to the community? What do you know? What do you You also got to understand, OK, this is the uh, this demographic, this demographic maybe has this limiting belief. This is their understanding on money. How do I help them? shift their mindset. Hey guys, you know, this is what my vision is. This is what our vision is. Every time we sit with a client, with an agent, with a family, with someone that we know, we write a love letter to money because how do we see money? How have we been told about money? Oh, well, we've been told that it's bad. That is bad. So you got to shift the mindset. Why? Okay. Now you study. Why is, why do we think that money's bad? What has been told to us about why is money bad? Where does that come from? Who has told us that? Where did that come from from them? And then you start understanding generations. You, you start understanding why people think this way. And then you start living out that vision more and more. You get more and more clear. Why? Because now you're studying that topic. You know, this business is a sport. Exactly. And we practice every single day. And we have to understand what skills we need to practice. Like our focus, a lot of it is what, what is our two, like what is our focuses in our business? What's going to drive our business leadership and sales. If you master, like if you master one or the other, you're going to get closer to making that vision a reality because if has masters leadership, he's going to build the greatest leaders the industry has ever seen. And if we're in the business of sales and he masters sales, those leaders that are amongst him, if they also master that skill of sales, they're going to fulfill their dreams and they're going to be great leaders by mastering that as well. And it's a recipe, right? We're, we're cooking a big meal. Every skill is a part of the, the recipe. And the more we perfect that recipe and that meal, the greater that meal is going to be. It's funny because sales and leadership is two sets of skills that you can take across anything with That's you. That's so true. Like you can life insurance, retirement planning, uh, you can sell toothbrushes, you could you could lead men to sell uh, microphones, whatever it is. If you have sales skills and leadership skills, you can go do anything. Um, what what is um, what is uh. I'm trying to think of how, how to dissect Haas's leadership and how you're incorporating that. So what are you doing as a leader to improve that you've noticed can make a, the biggest difference? Like, is it like going to the gym every morning? You kind of mentioned a system. Uh, if I, if I create a system to go to the gym every morning, that will have the biggest effect. Like what is something like that for leadership? Great question. So, one of the things that we do in the office within us is uh, fitness is because he comes from bodybuilding. Yeah. Right. So we keep each other in check about that. Yeah. So I think that's one way that he's fulfilling that leadership role is like, guys, we got to work out. Mm -hmm. got, and guess what? We hold him accountable. And he was a former bodybuilder. Right. It's like if we see a little bit of this coming out too much, yeah. I go, I'm like, hey, coach, you know, you got to low, go, go low on the sugars and carbs. He does the same thing because we understand that fitness Bro, health, it gets you to your wealth. 
Yeah. Because the moment you walk in a room, you don't have to say a word. You already being judged. Absolutely. Because if a client sees that you're not fit, they'll be like, if this guy can't even take care of his body, what makes me think that he's going to take care of me? Exactly. Exactly. So fitness very important take care of yourself take care of your health be disciplined and what you eat and i i'm improving in that area because i was at a point where i was not doing that now i'm getting better i'm getting better i'm putting systems in place like if i know i love sweets and desserts and this and that i can't go buy it and have it at the house so when i come home late at night and i'm tired and i'm hungry that's the first thing i'm gonna go eat yeah. so we're we're improving on that but it's that accountability so how is he fulfilling the lead? He goes to the gym, he works out, you see fit. So when you see your leader like that, if you're not looking like that, you're going to get your, F, you know, your shit together and go and go work out and go take care of yourself. Because in the long run, the person that's going to outlast, right? Patrick speaks about it. I'll improve, I'll strategize, outlast. If your health is not in the best place, you may be making a million, you may be making money, this and that, but if your health is not a priority five, 10 years from now, you're gonna be having all this money, but your health is gonna be poop, mm. diabetes, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Health, number one, we hold each other accountable in that sense. Make sure we work out. Hey, did you work out today? Boom, boom, boom. Take care of our bodies. Number one, right? Number two, so you said, how does he, uh, how do we copy and paste his leadership. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the three things, right? Uh, outlast. The way we're gonna outlast people is by making sure that we take care of our health. How do we out improve people? We gotta read. So, and that also comes from the top down. Haas, right? Book of the month reads Audible. He was like, Rodolfo was like, oh yeah, I read four books a month. One, four books a month. A book a week. A book a week, I was like, oh, man, if I'm not doing that, I'm not going to get to that level. Haas, four books a month. So me, if I'm sometimes scratching half a book a month, I got to read minimum two books a month to right. at least, right? So that's the way that we out improve is by reading. Because what, like you said, if they're out working us is because they're out improving us. They're out self-developing us. They're reading more books than us. They're practicing their craft more. So guess what I see in my leader? He reads, he constantly reads all his messages. Like Haas, from the moment I've met Haas, his, like I've never got to a point where his message is repetitive. The value that he provides us and the team has never been repetitive. Like you don't, you January, you hear the message and then April, you're hearing the same stuff. No, no, no. It's constant improvement. It's constant value. It's constant pointing into the team from a book that he just read, from something that he's learning, constant. Con so when you're seeing that, you're like, okay, I got to go read. I got to go improve. I got to go put that time into, you know, do that. So we talked about out improving, right? Um, outlasting, out strategizing. He's someone, he strategizes and he gets detailed with strategizing. So, for example, he went to the, I believe it was the Super Bowl party, uh, uh, Patrick, and then Patrick yeah. was speaking about the his business plan, right? And he, you know, Haas is like, yeah, you know, we worked on our business plan, you know, two hours, three hours, and Patrick goes up there fired up, excited about the future. You see how, you know, Pat is. He's like, yeah, we worked on our business plan for 10, 15, 16 hours. So Haas is like, we got to put more time into making sure that we put more time into our business plan, our vision. You spent our, 10 Like, hours? bro, it was like 10 hours, 12 hours. That's what Patrick spent on, on his business. On a yearly business, business plan. Quarterly. Quarterly because business Patrick, plan. Uh, he does quarterly business plans. Wow. So every so think about that. We do a year of business plan. Patrick does a quarter. You spend yeah, a couple hours, you think. A couple hours, an hour, two hours, three hours. If he's spending 10 hours on a business plan for a quarter, oh my that's God. why Patrick's more excited than he's ever been. And you feel that and you see that. Why is a four five hundred million dollar man runs ten companies, is working more than he's ever done before and more fired up than he's ever been? His vision is more clear than it's ever been because of what he's doing. So if Haas is seeing that he's clear. we we gotta go be more clear. We gotta get more detail. We gotta 
literally peel the onion on a different level. So when I see my leader doing that, guess what I have to do? My little 30 minutes of a little BS business plan that I put together now has to improve. Now I got to go spend two hours, three hours, and at least try to catch up and at least try to keep up. So that's how it is, is that Haas is very good going back to what are we duplicating? What are we copying and pasting? Is the level of his speed of implementation. A lot of people during this event, TTT, they absorb this. They might come back and they may take three months to implement what they learned. Yeah. Haas goes back. I've seen Haas. We go to events. He writes down. He takes. He goes back, takes a day. And that first BOM, guys, this is what we're implementing. This is what we're going to be doing. He starts doing it. Everyone follows. So it's that speed of implementation that we see him doing it. He changing things fast. We do the same. So those are, did, did that kind of answer your question Absolutely, in terms yeah. of like what we copy and paste? That's how we're going to outlast. Fitness is first. That's how we're out going to work people is if we self develop more than everyone else, if we're reading more than everyone else and I'll strategize. How much time are we putting into our business plan and our vision and what's exciting? You know, Haas, every time I see him, He's like, hey, what are you excited about? What are you excited about today, six months from now, a year? Are you excited? What are you excited about? Because he's excited. Bro. Because he's excited about who he's going to be six months from yeah. now. Because he's excited about who he's going to be a year from now. Because he's excited about who he's going to be five years from now, who we're going to be. It's constant dream, bro. Pouring dream, dream, dream. We get that from Rodolfo, big dreamer. And a lot of people get too caught up in the system that they lose that dream. Um, and I've been part of certain people's trainings where it's like that. It's too much system that people get so caught up in the system that they're not excited about the future. They're not excited about following the system because they're not clear on where they're going. Yeah. So Haas is so clear, man, about this dream, about this vision, about what we're going to be. I walk into his office sometimes. What's up, Corey? What, what you doing? Hey, man, come, come. Look at this Esther Martin. Bro, look at clean, green. Look at the interior. Look how much it costs. You know what we got to do to get that? This is how much business leaders, this is how many MDs you got to have. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, look at this house. Let me show you. Oh, man, Intercoastal and Boca. Check this. Imagine when we're back there with our kids, with our family, with our teams. You know, when we invite everybody over for cigar night, everybody's, you know, sitting around. We're talking about what we were going through, the breakthroughs we had at TTT. Remember when you went? You didn't have nobody? And now, look, bro, you, you got, like, Two, three, four hundred people coming to meetings. You got a hundred directs coming to meetings. Yeah. You know, these are the things we speak about. It's constant dreaming is who we're going to be. And that's what keeps us excited. That's what sometimes makes things worth it. Like you talk, oh man, you wake up so early and you go to sleep so late and you sacrifice so much. I see, I've seen my leader and my coach sacrifice a lot. Yeah. I've seen his family come down from Michigan. Okay. Haven't seen his mom and sister in months and he does not spend time with them while they're there. He's working. So you see that and that's, that's leadership. He's living what he's trying to do is he's trying to build the best leaders. And the only way he's doing that is by him being a leader. And we're just seeing what he does and we're duplicating. And that passion, that vision, that dream, everything is because he's living it. Yeah. He doesn't tell us, guys, you got to dream. No, he's dreaming. Yeah. I pop up on him and he's over there looking at houses and, you know, how the team's going to look. I even find, you know what I found myself doing uh, one time? I found myself... We were wa watching uh, one of the UFC fights where one of our friends had a big party where they, you know what I found myself doing? I was on Canva and I can show you this. It was GOW hierarchy and I was literally putting pictures of our headquarters, GOW headquarters, what we're going to have in there. We're going to have a cigar lounge, okay? We're going to have a, a suit place where everybody's going to go. They're going to get c custom tailored suits. We're going to have a barbershop there because we're always going to have a haircut e before every BOM, okay? And we're walking in there. Everybody's, you know, we're hey, guys, let's go have some cigars, some coffees. Uh, we're going to debrief. We're going to have pregame at a cigar lounge. Uh, guys, let's make sure everybody, we're going to get a haircut cut um and then guys our suits are going to be ready we're going to go get dressed we're going to go get a, you know get fitted out our suits and then we're going to go upstairs guys we're expecting about a thousand two thousand guests so i want to make sure everybody's looking sharp and you know we're going to crush this bom and that that's 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 the conversations 
and we're and, and then we put it on a vision like we're look like I'm putting things on Canva together about how that building is going to look about how the cigars lounge is going to look about the suits that we're going to be wearing you know about the barber that's going to travel with us to all the events and he's going to give us a fresh haircut before we go on stage like this this is, isn't doesn't this excite you thinking I'm, I'm, about I'm like excited I'm excited right now up, bro. Bro. I'm excited right now I can't wait to come. So. But then now it's about going in and instilling that in other people. Absolutely. And, and helping people also buy into that. Because yeah. sometimes when we prospect and, oh, like, you got to pour that into people. They got to feel that. Man, how does it feel working here? What kind of life you want to live? Man, you're so, like, the, just talking to you right now, you're so passionate. You know, you're so clear about what you want for your family. You don't belong here. You belong here. You belong doing this. You belong around these people. Man, what's your number, bro? I believe that if you come to our office... If you come see, if you come, if I introduce you to, to some of the people that I work alongside, I believe you're going to be huge. What's your number? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And people feel that. People feel that energy. Yeah. Uh, we, we have the same thing. So we want a compound. We want it, we want it to be at a hangar. So it's like we got the cigar lounge. We got we got a bunch of guns. So. Oh, bro, gun? <laughs> oh. It's like Kingsman. So, um one thing I do because we are gonna be running a little low on time. Hey man, which, we could go for another ten hours. No, I bro. literally have so much more to talk about, but like, like we didn't get into politics. There's so much to talk about. Um, what I do want to touch on is you were gonna tell me a story on the way up here, and I was like, let's save it for the podcast. Uh, uh, about your religion, about our, our religion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, born in Colombia, uh, grew up around Catholics. Uh, my family, we believed, but we weren't your, you know, forcing the religion on people because my grandfather had that experience. You know, him growing up, he was going to school and they forced him to go to like service and go to church. And, you know, he was there and like you couldn't go to the bathroom. So, you know, he you know why he's so traumatized about like that Catholics and all that because they would force him to stay during service and he had to he peed on himself oh so he, like he literally peed on himself because right so that was like so we were we believed in something higher we you know we prayed to something above us but we weren't really strict on going to church and all that now on my biological dad side they were like that church whatever Catholics okay so I grew up around that I was baptized all that came to the states you're more around christians so you you know you're around christians and you go be with christians and you go to church right and all that so there's a uh, i'm gonna tell you a story what happened so my mom she she went she wanted to go down that route she wanted to you know christian go to church be part of that you know have her so she used to go to this church i'm not gonna name the uh, the church she used to go to this church she was there she remembers uh this lady that used to always go there and the lady she used to be uh, she used to make good money so she would always donate to the church be passionate about the church and you know help the church volunteer at the church and fast forward something happened in her life she found herself in a really bad situation she found herself you know homeless mm. and she went to the church and she asked for help and they turned her down after all the money well, so then my mom saw that and she's like oh no i don't this is i don't like this like what's going on here like you know so then we found ourselves not being too part of going to church going to service and i grew up i'm a, i'm at at heart i like challenging mm -hmm. so I, i'm a challenger so i'm like man i see all these people at church on sunday you know saying all these things praising all this stuff and then monday through saturday they're out here sinning they're out here doing wrong they're out here drinking they're out here and i was one of those right i was uh, i was lost i was lost i was trying to find my place but i was lost and i'll never forget this i grew up around uh, uh this this guy his name's a waste a waste i grew up around a waste i met him in high school and he was he was muslim Right. And me, you know, obviously we all had our experience smoking weed and all that. Right. Drinking. And one, every time he came around us, never, bro. Like the level of discipline, 
and the level of like standing for what he believes never had a sip of alcohol never smoked was like barely party none of that stuff and i always kind of saw that right but i never really like i didn't feel comfortable going to him and asking him questions about the religion so i was never curious wanting to like go down that route with him and he was the only muslim that like i had access to like growing up that i can learn about whatever i get into php i meet haas right and look at all i've spoken about haas mm -hmm. right the type of guy he is the type of leader he is what he stands for and i asked myself like where does that stem from like where does that really like peel the onion where like growing up how it's like who were you what did you stand how was your mom with you like what were you believes would you and it all was going to like that religion because i was asking him questions like hey this hey that right then i started i would go home and i would analyze okay i remember when i was with the catholics this is kind of how they were when i was with the christians look at the experience i had with the christians I wasn't really a fan, you know, now I'm around. And then I remember growing up with my friend Oasis and what he stood for, never compromised. He was disciplined. He was this like, and I remember all the good things that I was taught growing up, respect, manners. You know, I will grow up going to my friend's household. If they cooked the meal, I, I said, his and my trade off is I washed the dishes. I grew up around my grandfather. Yes, sir. No, sir. So I had a lot of mores and values but i never asked where that stemmed from where that came from now being this i understand where which i get into so okay so i'm asking house questions and i'm going back and i'm like man i remember going to these catholic people asking questions they go to preacher mode mm -hmm. preacher mode preacher mode what you testing god's this you testing god's now i'm just trying to get clear on on what it is that like i'm you know trying to uh, go by, you know, I, I want to have clarity. I want to be able to go out there and stand for something, be clear on it. And people that have questions, I want to be able to answer those questions. Why are you guys going into preacher mode if I'm asking questions? Bad taste in my mouth. Christians, hey guys, listen, I I'm wondering about this. And I'm, oh, wait, you don't believe in this and what you're testing. You don't believe this. And I'm like, guys, I'm just trying to get clear on this faith and if i'm gonna go out there and, and be a representative of this faith i want to know what i stand for i want to be clear and the people that have questions i want to be able to answer them but then i go to haas and i'm like hey uh i have questions about this yeah absolutely boom 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 hey i have questions about this I, of course boom 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 and then x out haas go to this guy hey i have questions about this it's, this is how it is i love the fact you're curious boom 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 because remember, we're not supposed to go tell. We have to wait till someone asks. Mm -hmm. And the moment that someone asks, then we're like, hey, let me give you guidance. And then I'm like, okay, here, preacher mode, here, preacher mode, here. They're very open. They want me to understand and know the truth. Why is that? Very interesting. So I started diving deep, diving deep. And then this is, I'm going to make it very simple. This is how I came down to it, okay? I'm like going back to... Who do I want to be? What kind of life do I want to live? What do I want to be proud of? Anytime I walk into a room, do I want to be proud of what I stand for? Of course I do. Do I want to uh, be able to answer people's questions about what I stand for and what I believe? The people that I try to go ask them, they go into preacher mode. It's like they don't want me to know the truth. It's very weird. But this one over here, he wants me to know the truth. He's answering everything. He's going back to this. He's giving me timelines. He's giving me answers. And it also all correlated with the way that you live, right? Because one thing is uh, going back to leadership, bro. It's like, it's like this business all correlates to like our religion, like what we stand for. Yeah. And it's like, okay, if I'm going to church on Sundays and these people are telling me all these things, but then this priest is going back and he's doing all this bad stuff, that's not being a leader. Okay, what about the uh, Christian, right? Like you're over here embracing all this money when it comes to you. And then when somebody, you know, is asking for help, you don't help them. That's not being a leader. But then what about the Muslims over here? Anytime somebody needs help, embrace the help. Anybody's like, and my grandfather, he had like, my grandfather's never said, no, I'm this, I'm that. But he saw something from his dad. And what was his dad? Muslim. Okay stood up for what was right he was very honest like when i sit down with my grandfather and he tells me like i speak the religion language 
He doesn't say it, but everything he stands for is Islam. Mm -hmm. Like, grandfather, like, you're more Muslim than you think because you stand for all these things, you believe all these things, blah, blah, blah. And so for me, man, it was just really seeing, like, what am I going to be proud of? I want to be proud, man. I want to be disciplined. I want to know that the people that I'm going to go and, and I'm going to be a part of and I'm going to stand for are going to be people that are disciplined, people that, that are of character, people that are structured, people that are uh, leaders, people that are not telling you what to do. They're living by it. And I'm like diving deep, diving deep. And then, man, that moment. So it's very interesting. So there was a guy, uh, Mir. I went to high school with Mir. Uh, Mir from Philadelphia went to high school with him and I remember this guy like moved to like Egypt the Middle East and you know he's a full-blown Muslim and everything and I'm in my journey and he starts hitting me up hey brother boom 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 I see you're posting this I see you're posting that and we're texting we're talking and then we start getting on the phone and it's so weird man how things start to align how things start to align how things start to align and this guy all of a sudden he starts coming and then I did my shahada over the phone with him. He goes, hey, brother, do you believe this? I believe this. Do you, then what, what you waiting for? All you got to believe is one thing and then just believe that uh, Muhammad was the last messenger. We only believe in one creator and one thing. We don't go out there and we don't, you know, pray to statues and we don't pray and there's no face to our religion. Like, think about that. And even in the Bible, it speaks about that. You're not supposed to idolize right. things. You don't idolize figures. And people walk around with, you know, certain faces on their shirts. And sometimes people disrespect that face and people are okay with it. Um, and where people of character, where people of a lot of respect, where people of morals and values, and we don't care, we will never compromise. The strength, the unity. My family, how's my family? I grabbed all these things from my family and these are all things that correlate to, and then it's systems, okay? Our business is about what? Systems. It's about systems. Okay, what systems do we have? We have systems on how to eat. We have systems on how to shower. We have systems on how to pray. We have, si everything is very systematic and it gives you guidance and it's very simple. Catholics, you go tell them, hey guys, so what systems do you have in place? They have no systems. Hey Christians, what systems do you guys have in place? Uh, they have no systems. You know well, what? The, well, I think maybe an argument would be Catholics might have a system in regards to don't they not eat or something like a, the on like a Friday they don't eat. But that's the thing. Let's talk about across everybody that says <clears throat> they're Catholic. Do they do that? Some say because I see what you're I some see what you're say, saying. oh, it's because it universal. My yeah, it's because my parents did it. So I'm, I'm going to do it. Like I've met a lot of Christians that are Christians because their parents were Christian, but they have nothing. They have no clue about Christianity. And then guess what? A lot of Christians eat pork. Even in the Bible, it says you're not supposed to eat pork. So yeah. what's going on? You know, it's it's like it's just compromising. It's certain religions. Yeah, they it's picking and for, choosing. It's picking and choosing. Yeah. So with us, it's more like, hey, this is don't get me wrong. We all sin. We all pick and choose. We all like it's normal. It's but do we do more good than bad? That's what we try to. Of course we do. And it's just the unity, man. It, it's the unity. And uh, for, for me, going back to, I, I want to touch on the top. Did that answer your question, by the yeah, way, about absolutely. my journey? So, okay, no, I the, a huge gap I okay, missed. Okay, go ahead. So I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. Boom, shot. Then I start going to the mosque. And mosque and I'm, I'm you know there and I'm around these people the level of respect the level of structure and then man listen I'm gonna be honest and people always say oh I found this and my life got better no bro my life got better my life got more clear my I, I had a level of accountability that I never had before in my life because when I was a Catholic when I was a Christian and there was a chance of me doing something wrong I did it and I'm like ah, I'm good. Someone died on the cross for my sins. I could sin. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then here it's like, no, nah, man, there's I'm going to be held accountable. If I do something when no one's watching, there's someone that is up there watching. I never felt that in the other two camps. I didn't feel that level of accountability. I felt like, hey, you know what? If I do wrong today, if I go on Sunday, everything's going to be washed away. But there's no level of real accountability in what I do here. I felt it, bro. Like I'm literally God fearing. Like I fear God. Like I fear that the moment I make a wrong decision, I'm going to pay for it. 
I didn't feel that in those other two camps. That's powerful. I, I, I agree with I do fear God because every time I do wrong, wrong stuff happens and it's just it's just God. One might say the system for Christians in place is you show up to church every Sunday and you're washed. Your, 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 your sins are washed. Would that be a system? Uh, you you can say that's a system, but you also have to boil down to how are they living a day to day. And you mentioned well, accountability. So accountability, like okay, for example, another thing I saw right when you when you go to the mosque, how do you see people dress? I'll be honest with you, I haven't been to a mosque in I've probably been to a mosque maybe twice in my life, and that was all when I was under the age of ten. So I okay, that's been. okay. So for uh, okay, how do I want my woman to look for example right how do i want my wife to look what do i want my wife to stand for you go to some catholic churches or service you go to some christian services uh these women look like they're going to the club and it, it, sometimes yeah some so so uh in yeah i want my woman to not be promiscuous so it's like for me it's what do i want to be proud of yeah what, you know what i mean what do i want to be like you guys are going there yes you're doing all of this but are you living by it that's yeah. the big difference you have to live by it you have to be disciplined by it you have to stand for what you believe you have to it's leadership bro it's leadership like you can't go tell someone not to do this but they're doing the complete opposite you can't go tell someone yeah no i respect myself but then i'm going to the you know the house of god and i'm half naked what level of respect do you have for him and for yourself it's respect you yeah. morals values respect what level do you have for yourself and what level do you have for that man i got you okay i we're running on out of time but i want to touch two more things because you just brought something to my mind um in the pb uh the md meeting patrick mentioned uh love respect like and fear which one is most important? Depends on the situation. Is but it family? Is it business? Is it life? Generally. Like, like generally, uh, across all platforms, which one is? I, I just am curious to know. Like, I don't want to get too deep into this. So mine would be respect. Respect. Mine is respect. Some might say like because you can't, uh, like, for example, for business, if you want to have, if you want to do business with people, they have to like you. Uh, some might say love. Love is one of the strongest feelings on earth, the strongest emotion. Um, some might say fear. If you're feared, you automatically have respect. But it, so my opinion is fear, uh, respect. Respect is the most important out of those four. So it's respect, fear, liked, love. Yeah. So one one argument I heard was like can lead to everything else so if i like you i might respect you if i like you i might love you if i like you i might fear you you know what i mean man that's that's such a like it's a loaded question it's, 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 it's way too it's, deep it's of a something question maybe. that you have to really sit down and process but just me sitting here and thinking before answering if i had to choose one respect it respect yeah respect it you know why because respect is something that is not uh, you you don't it's earned. you don't just get you have to earn earned. it. got you you have to earn it F final final thoughts man A anything you want you want to say uh floor is yours anything you want to kind of bring up um as, as we close um yeah man i think it's important for uh our our community uh most importantly to understand our industry to be to get the education about our industry to understand that it's not a bad thing because I know within our community with certain beliefs, they may think that this industry and life insurance and all this is a bad thing. Uh, it's actually a phenomenal thing. And a lot of our morals and values and what I've learned with Islam, it correlates a lot to what we stand for in this business. Yeah. Uh, so if you're looking, if, if, if you're a Muslim and, and you are turning down life insurance, exit life insurance completely out. Don't think about life insurance. Think about, do you want to be aligned with leaders? Yes or no. I do want to be aligned with leaders. Do I want to be aligned with individuals that are going to respect my wife? I, I do. 
okay, number three, do I want to go out there and provide value, help other people and be a net positive to society or a net negative? Uh, that's why you, you should consider it. So for us, if, if our community is like, oh, life insurance, think about it. If you stand for this within your religion, you want to associate yourself with a company and with people that stand for the same thing. And that's why for me, man, PHP is so powerful because whether you're Christian, Catholic, whatever, we're going out there. And a lot of people that are Christians and Catholics there are actually living out the same morals and values that we stand for. Yeah. Uh, and, and we need more of that. I believe that in our industry, in our company specifically, we need more people that stand for the morals and the values that we stand for. I, I agree. And we need more representation. Uh, it's, it's like we spoke when we first met, first encounter it's something that you feel like like you've known each other your whole life we're brothers we're, we're brothers and and it's because that that one thing it brings us so together and i don't i don't see because i have conversations with you know christians and catholics hey when you see another christian do you feel like that no sometimes you got to get to know the person first hey you got to trust the person first us man be, be, because of what we believe we know that that trust is loyalty trust respect we already expect that from one another mm. so we never have to question whether you have that or you don't yeah i know you already do yeah. i know you're one thing that leaves me at peace is knowing that like me right now like i can leave this room and leave my wife in this room with you and i know she's fine yeah Christians, they have to find Catholic, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it, yeah. but it's important for people to understand that, you know, this is what we're a part of. And and we lack representation of that. We lack more people to come into that because I, our vision and we share this in common. I think that's why we kicked it off is that we need more Muslims in this industry and in this company. Yeah. We do. We need more of that leadership. We need more people uh, that are not going to compromise. We need more people that are going to stand up for what is right. And right now, not only the U.S., but the world, we need more leaders. And if you can be a leader within your religion, within your household, within your family, within your mosque, within your community, please bring that over to this company because that's what this company is looking for. And if we bring more of that, not only is our is our community going to get better our industry is going to get better our people going to get better and overall we're going to be like uh patrick says a net positive for individuals um and, and that's that's what i would say thank you i appreciate you uh for giving me the time man for sharing some heartbeats with me having me on this podcast and like i said we could go for hours we gotta yeah. we gotta do it again yeah absolutely man i, I can't wait for another reason for us to sit down we got we're gonna, we're gonna go on instagram lives a lot more man that message was from my mom and dad. I love you guys. <laughs> Appreciate man. you, Saeed Abdallah. Thank you, bro. I got you, man. Appreciate you. This was great.